Hi guys, I wanted to do a comparison video between the difference between the new Shimano Vanquish 2500S versus the new Daiwa RD PCLT 2500H. And uh, disclaimer, I wish I was able to get the same gear ratio that I have with the Shimano Vanquish 2500S compared to the 2500H. But you know, based on my fishing needs, since I'm not sponsored by anybody, I paid out of pocket for this uh both of these two reels so I have to get a different one so that I, it fulfills a different uh, uh, function for me so I just want you guys to let you know that you know I know this is not gonna be a direct head-to-head -head comparison but you know at least I wanted to give an information on you know what you can expect out of the box how they perform and you know what separates them between the two so first thing that I wanted to that I wanted to say is out of the box when I spun the new Shimano Vanquish 2500S I noticed it has a lighter rotational feel compared to the new Diary TPCLT 2500H the 2500H has a slight heavier startup inertia but I know the reason behind that is because Daiwa puts a bigger digi gear compared to Shimano. So even you know with their other reels, like uh, for example, I have the Daiwa Certate in the past. I actually sold that reel. It's one heck of a reel. I highly recommend that too. But it has that same feeling of uh, slight heavier startup inertia compared to the Shimano reels. And like I like what I've mentioned, it's because of that bigger digi gear that makes it uh, turn a little bit uh, not really that heavy, but slightly heavier. So another thing too that I know that Daiwa does is for you to get that buttery smoothness, they use a thicker grease, and they also put some of that here on the digi gear hence why you have that magical buttery smoothness which in my opinion makes the diver reels smoother but you know anywhere you're gonna have that you're gonna have to sacrifice uh, something so keep that in mind when you're buying any of these reels you're gonna ask yourself do you want a reel that's gonna be more smoother but turns a little bit heavier or do you want a reel that turns lighter but it's gonna be less smooth you know so it's up to you to decide uh, and then another thing too that I wanted to mention is the casting distance when I tested both of these reels I noticed that the casting distance is actually the same the only time that it changed for me is when I switch my fishing rods from because I have the Shimano Lunamis medium and then I have the Daiwa Labra medium light and when I casted both of these reels on the Shimano Lunamis I've noticed that uh, my casting distance is shorter compared to my Daiwa Labra medium light so from there it's use, it's really your your uh, fishing rod that's going to determine that i know shimano uh, advertises the new vanquish to have that slow oscillation so that it has a better line lay and it will make the line uh, spool out uh, easier based on my testing it didn't make a difference and even in my old shimano reels i had the twin power and I tried it out too, just to test out if the new, uh, if the slow oscillation, you know, provides a better casting distance. I didn't notice any difference. And then plus, you know, Shimano is gonna say that, oh, we changed the, the oscillation so that the line will, uh, the line day will be better. Well, I never had that problem with the older reels so you know with any marketing information that they, to, that they provide you take it with a grain of salt don't fixate yourself to think that oh this new tech is gonna be 
really that great. You know, when in act, when when in when in practice or when in when in actual uh, situation, again, based on what I've seen, it didn't make a difference. Again, it's gonna be your fishing rod that's gonna determine that. Now, moving on, I wanted to let you guys hear the difference between the dra the drag clicker and uh, it's up to you guys to decide which one you prefer you know at this point you know when you compare the drag clicker it's gonna be subjective so here it goes so let's try first with the Shimano Vanquish and we'll see Try the new airy. Okay, let's try again the vanquish. And the airy again. Okay. As far as drag clicker wise. I couldn't tell the difference which one's louder so you know I do saltwater fishing so out there it's gonna be a little bit harder for me to hear with the when the waves are, are splashing but I do say that I think I like the clicker on the new Shimano Vanquish compared to the Daiwa Arity but that's just me you know it, it's very subjective at this point so you know go with what you like uh, pretty much and then uh, another thing too that I wanted to mention is stuff that people don't th uh, think about when you're purchasing these reels is when it comes to maintenance I think maintenance is very important because if you're gonna be spending this much on a reel at least you want to get an idea on how well it will last you and then how you can service it now I like Daiwa reels, but one thing I don't like about them is that with the new Monaco body design, you have to get the special tool so that you can open up the side plate here. And I'm going to put the link below after I'm done doing this review so that you guys can uh, purchase that side plate socket. You can get it from eBay. and that's one of the things that kind of sometimes might discourage somebody when they buy a diver reel with the Monaco gear is uh, this side plate socket if you accidentally dunk this reel in salt water you, and you don't have that side plate tool you have to bring this to uh, a service center a diver service center if you know by some chance too that you do that with the Shimano Vanquish I will say that you know with the way how Shimano designs their reels it's easier to service the Shimano reels compared to the Daiwa reels and plus Daiwa doesn't sell the Maxil reel to the public I wish they really do but you know in those situations you have to order the the max seal oil and it's not gonna be the original one you might have to get something else from Amazon they do sell it but it's not gonna be the original so just keep it in keep that in mind when you're buying these reels pretty much I'm gonna put it this way your Shimano reel is gonna be like a Lexus you can have regular tools you can disassemble this no problem whilst your diver reel is going to be like your European car where you have to have that special tool so that you can service it yourself now again keep in mind if you are gonna be spending this amount of money on your reels just factor in the maintenance and consider that and uh, before I forgot another thing too that I wanted to mention is with the diver reels that 
thing that I've noticed with these reels is they're very picky when it comes to the grease that you're gonna put on it. If you use an aftermarket grease and like let's say you have that situation where you ac accidentally dunk this in salt water. This is not a waterproof reel. Water is gonna come in. Salt water is very corrosive. So when you get home, you have no choice. You're gonna have to disassemble. You're gonna have to strip down everything. If you don't have the original Daiwa grease, that magical buttery smoothness is gonna be gone. You have to get the original Daiwa grease if you want it to perform like original. And in my experience, I had to order that straight from Japan and it was a little bit pricey. Same thing with the side plate tool. Whilst with the Shimano reels, I don't have to worry about that. I can just put whatever grease that I can get and I'm set. It's not that picky when it comes to grease. Now, again, keep in mind, if you want it to run like original, get the original grease. But if, you know, but if you can get it with Shimano, you know, you don't have to worry about that too much. So that's one of the things that I just want people to keep in mind when you're buying any of these reels. Now, uh, if you're very good with your with your gear, you know how to take care of it. You don't really have to open the the Daiwa reel that often, and if you do have into the event where you feel like, oh, I just want to service it a little bit, where I'm, I uh, just wanted to add a little bit more grease or a little bit more oil on my Daiwa reel, you can actually open just this cap here. And you can get a brush and then just add a little bit of grease here or drop a little bit of oil on the pinion and you're all set. I wouldn't recommend people opening or removing the spool and adding oil here. Because keep in mind, you have a mag seal uh, oil here close to the, to the, what you call it? to the drag so if you add oil in here it's gonna contaminate it and then it's gonna mess it up so I wouldn't recommend it as far as maintenance wise I always recommend people to spray a little bit of uh, water on their reels and uh, not hose it too much because you know once water comes in uh, and it dries up it might cause problems so FYI so uh, other than that looks wise it's subjective if you're gonna choose between which one looks nicer the Shimano Vanquish or the Daiwa Arity beauty is in the eye of the beholder to me personally both of them look nice I will say though I kind of like the way how the new Vanquish looks with the glossy paint compared to the Daiwa Arity which has a little bit of that flat paint color right there but you know if you have a rod you need to match it with I put them on my I put this reel on the Daiwa Labra it looked nice put this on the, the, the Lonamis since it's black it was easier to match so, you know, at this point, you're splitting hairs, which one you, you go with. And with the things that I've mentioned, just, you know, ask yourself again, which one's important to you? Something that's a little bit smoother, but turns a little bit heavier. But once you get going, it will be buttery smooth. Or something that has a, a slider, lighter rotational feel. It's as smooth, it's easier to maintain, and uh, before I forget, they have the difference, be they, the, these two reels have a different uh, drag capacity. The 2500S has only 
four kilograms of pound. Uh, I'm sorry, four kilograms of drag compared to the Daiwa Airy, which is ten kilograms. Now, any fishermen out there, keep in mind you're not going to use the full capacity. And if somebody is in the fence worrying, because like for my example, I do saltwater fishing. Before I bought this reel, I was actually very worried that I might have trouble bringing in big fish. And I will tell you now, I didn't have any problem. I had the 16 inch speckled trout or even and even a 20 inch sheep's head. The reel performed flaws, flawlessly. I didn't have any problems bringing in the fish. And plus, it's also your style on how well you can play with that fish that determines even a big, you know, even if you're hooked into something big, you know, you'll be able to bring it in. But keep in mind, if we're talking about a shark, of course, that's a different story, you know. So, plus, the Vanquish is... And especially on this model, it's more inclined into the finesse side. Whilst the PCLT LT this version, I think is a little, it's going to give me a little bit more uh, room to work with. And same thing also is the spool on the 2500S has a smaller capacity compared to the PCLT 2500H. Because I have more line here compared to the 2500S. But like what I mentioned in the beginning of the vid, that's the main reason why I bought this reel is because I needed something to fulfill that gap that I have with the Shimano Vanquish. Other than that, let me repeat, any of these two reels that you buy, you're not gonna make a mistake. You're gonna be happy with it. You're gonna be satisfied with it. And, uh, by the end of the day, those things that I've mentioned, hopefully it leads you to which reel you're going to purchase. Other than that, thank you very much for watching the vid. And if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. And if I've missed uh, anything that I wasn't able to expound upon, uh, let me know and then uh, I'll try to answer any of those questions. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.